platform of that political party. The Constitution has by inference said to you, you must toe the line of your political party by inference. And that is the area where you're saying the Constitution should be able to make it clearer. It shouldn't be adverse for anybody to understand that, that your party is supreme. You might forget temporarily because you are caught up in the midst of some problem, but invariably when someone points it out to you, just like it was pointed out to Mr. President, your party is supreme. It is on the platform of that party that you got to that position. But let's look at what's going on in the House. With the announcements that have been made now, what do you think? I think the members of the uh, National Assembly are beginning to get the message that the party's position should make them go the right path. Because it's interesting what the gentleman who left here said that there are five different political parties in the APC. I don't believe that. I believe that people who came to form APC shed the toga of their various other political parties to come together and work together to form APC, except for the new PDP that joined them after they had formed the APC. The new PDP was not with them at the time of formation of APC. APC had already been formed before the new PDP came to join them. Therefore, it is not true that you have five different political parties. They had all agreed to form APC at the time they formed the APC. And I don't see them divided along the lines of where they used to be in this climb. It is interesting to note that 80% of the people who were involved in this crisis who are members of APC were people who came in from PDP. Have you noted that? And interestingly, you say that you know this. Uh, you don't really see them as you know being members of that of their previous political parties. You see them as having shared that. Yet you know people will say that for the sake of taking all this interests into account, uh, we should be able to say you know, these are the people who came together to form this party. Have we taken care of all interests in this particular party? That's a party decision. It is not an individual who is going to dictate that to the party. And that is where we get it wrong. But somebody must bring it up. It's good, but bring it up in your party. You see, people go out there and they become their own political party. They wear the toga of being their own political party. And that's where we have a problem. The decision of what happens within your political party platform is taken by your political party. You have the option of staying there to argue your point out. But once the party takes that decision, you're supposed to abide by it. You know, people will say that this was actually... Uh, between party supremacy and the independence of the National Assembly. Uh, some people have argued that the National Assembly is, it takes on a life it's of its, its own. It's a conniving statement to say it is independence of National Assembly against the interest of political party. It's a conniving attitude. And conniving in the sense that without those political parties, will you have a National Assembly? Yeah, but after we've had the National Assembly, shouldn't the National Assembly be allowed to operate? They have not in any way interfered with the workings of the National Assembly. What they're saying, as political party, it's just like you asked the question, did your party appoint or elect a Pabio? And the gentleman is saying, yes, he's happy with it. Individualism is one of the things that crushed PDP. Check it out. They brought the same attitude into APC. APC at this point is at a crossroad and they need to understand that they have to strengthen their institution, which is their political party. 
Do you think this is over? I want to believe that if they learn the lesson very well, they'll be able to manage through with it. APC will now have to strengthen the institution that is their political party, not the individuals. Do you agree I mean, that there are gainers and losers in this uh, with the crisis that happened in the National Assembly? I wouldn't want to classify the situation as gainers and losers. They are all learners. Because the Nigerian people, we can say that we lost two, two whole months. That's correct. Uh, and we paid uh, dearly for a part, for a crisis that was supposed to have been within a political party and not within the National Assembly. I, I, I agree with you. Uh, the damage has been done as we have perceived. But if there is room for reparation, if there is room for uh, corrections, I think that is what path the APC need to follow through on now. But one of the most important lessons that they have to learn is how to put the point across to all their elected members that the party remains supreme. The position of the political party is what they are out there to project. If there are any differences with their political party, they need to iron it out in-house. So is it possible, what you're implying here is that on the floor, when they begin their legislative duties, Thank you. they, in quote, dare not vote against the party's desire? No, their job is to go out there and project their political party's position. The, the, there are other is their job parties not, too. Is their job not to serve the people that voted them in? The interest of their political party is to serve the people that voted them in. What if the interest of the party contradicts the desires of the people? Oh, that's a different ball game entirely. That's a different ball game entirely. Now you're saying the political party that is in government is not doing what they have promised to do to the people. That's a different ball game. And we must, you see, we must understand that situations are guided by intentions. If we have a good intention of good governance, it is that intention that guides what we're doing. But the moment we shift away, if our intention starts to change, then our actions will change too. So if a political party means well to serve well, whatever they're going to bring to the floor of the house has got to be something that will project the goodness of the people, good governance of the people, and so on and so forth. That's what the government, because they need the people to come back again to rule. So they won't dare go to the floor of the house and start doing things against the interests of the people. Can we really say this is truly over? I want to believe that, um, save for what is left in the Senate, which is the fact that a person from the PDP is the deputy Senate president. Safe for that. I think we might safely say it is almost about 80% over. That's the only snag that I think is left there. Uh, thank you very much, Dr. Adetokumbo Adedeji, of the Professionals for Change. Thank you for speaking with us. You're most welcome, sir. We would... Um Let's look at a few of the messages and comments that have been sent in. We have this one from Gide. Uh, Gide says, happy that the camps of both Wajabi Amila and Dogara have been disbanded. And Sohe says politicians should start thinking about Nigeria's interest instead of their personal interests. Jade or Jade says, there is seemingly only one honest way to resolve the crisis, unbundle what brought them together. <clears throat> I wonder what that is. <laughs> but as where it says, uh, talking about a bomb detector now, this is very commendable. I wish they will make them into little and smaller devices. Well, those were the comments. Some of the comments have come. There are still a lot of other comments. I want to thank you all for... The comments you've sent in, and thank you for watching. That's the show for today. I'm Neil Taibe. Oh, thank you. Chamberlain should be back hopefully by tomorrow. Uh, I'm Mark Bye-bye.